Hey, what's up everybody? Dan Liu here. And in this video, I want to go over how to create uh, headers and backgrounds uh, for your funnel pages. So I personally use Canva for pretty much all my graphic stuff when I create funnels. Um, so what I like to do is have basically a few different Canva files of different sizes and each size uh, kind of is for different uh, potential backgrounds. So I have one that's pretty much based for headers and this is a 1920 by 1080 size. Then I have another one which is a little bit bigger um, or a little bit longer vertically. So this one's 1440 by 1080. So it's not as, as, uh, as wide, right? So you can see 1440 versus the 1920. Um, and the last one is a little bit more narrow and this one's 1440 by 540. So basically half the size of this one. And I'll share with you why I do that in a second, but basically within Canva, I just come up with different, uh, ideas and for backgrounds and, and I just keep adding to my files basically. So if I see something I like, if I'm looking at another person's webpage or uh, funnel design, I'll, I'll draw inspiration from there and I'll try to come up with something of my own that, uh, that is similar or it might just come up with something brand new. So you can see I just have a variety of different backgrounds um, that I can use uh, throughout my, my funnel pages. So if I'm creating something and I can easily come in here and, and pick something or draw inspiration from what I have or maybe just change the colors and it's very quick. So it takes a little bit of time to get uh, going and building up your, your file. But I mean, once you have it, it's very easy to create backgrounds. So just to kind of share um, what I mean. So this is for the funnel designer secrets uh, .com website here or funnel. And if you haven't yet gotten your seven figure framework, uh, definitely grab this and your design mistakes ebook. Um, it's going to help you a lot when it comes to creating uh, awesome landing and sales pages. So this here is the header and you can see it's just got a, a nice kind of gradient color to it with some abstract, uh, shapes. And I'll show you how I did that in, in a couple minutes here. But then as you scroll down, there's some areas that just have very simple, uh, backgrounds here. So this is actually a, a gradient. Um, you can see there's a slight difference in color in the center than the outside. So it's not just one continuous color and you'll see down here, you know, just adding a little bit of detail just to break up some of this white space that I have. And then here is, uh, some kind of faded imagery in the back again, just to kind of break up the sections and, and, uh, you know, add a little bit more flair to your designs and then. Here again is another kind of gradient. It's similar to the one before. Um, another section background. So here it's very faint, but there are some shapes here that you may be able to see. Again, trying to take away from some of the white space and just help, uh, you know, people kind of read through the content and not, um, not be too distracted, right? So that's why you want things to be faint and not too over the top. Otherwise you're going to distract them from, you know, the core of what you really want them to read or consume, which is the content, right? So just to show you more examples. So this one does have a lot of white space, but because I'm using a lot of colorful imagery, um, you know, I, I didn't want to break it up too much. Uh, again, here are just some kind of abstract shapes and Here's another example here. So here's a header with a gradient here. So I knew that I was going to have text on this side. So I wanted the text to really shine. And if it was over top of here, you might have a hard time reading it. So that's why there's a gradient over on this side. Here you can see a light. Um, there's a background image, but I put a white overlay, which I'm going to show you how to do this in a second. Um, and then there's the parallax effect, right? So the image is basically fixed in the background, um, as I scroll. So as it's just a cool effect. So you can imagine, you know, if it was just white, it would still look nice and clean, but add or adding this in really just adds another element, um, to the page. And so I mentioned before I have three different sizes here. So 
for example, is 1440 by 540. You know, it's a little bit slimmer. Um, and you can see all just kind of the random different stuff I, I created. Um, and, you know, it doesn't take long. You can just sit there for 10 minutes and just try a bunch of different things, add in images, add in shapes, you know, just kind of cool little things like this that really just add, a, again, another element to your design, right? Even having this in your background instead of just a solid white might be kind of cool. Um, same thing here, but the, the goal of, you know, this was for sections. So you can see here, this is what I used here, right? So in this case, I didn't need this or this entire length. So therefore something like this would have been perfect. And same thing right here, right? You can see this is the image I used, um, for this section, keep scrolling down. And then I added these images. Um, so this is just an image over a gradient background, right? So this image I created, uh, sorry, I created here, exported, and then put in here as an image, right? So this isn't one entire piece. This is, you know, a background with text images and a button. All right, so this is just a sample page I created. Um, but again, you can see I added kind of just some abstract shapes just to break things up. So when it comes to shapes, you know, there really is no right or wrong, but just keep in mind that you want your shapes uh, not to take away from the main bulk of, or the main part of that section or the header, right? It's really there to complement and help really draw attention, but not to kind of be the primary uh, focal point. Um, so when you're creating, let's say images, you can come in and you can add text within Canva, right? So Canva is like an all in one type of uh, graphic software. So you can add in text to see what it's going to look like. So you can see here, I did it previously um, to see whether or not it was going to work. And then I exported uh, the background without the text, right? And that's what, um, that's what I got here. All right. So depending on your projects, um, you know, it's going to dictate, of course, what kind of background you want to use, uh, if you should use something visual or you should use something more, you know, abstract, uh, like this or like the uh, final designer secrets. Right. So for this, it did make sense for me to include a picture of people. Uh, I didn't think so that's where having some, uh, you know, design with abstract shapes and it kind of helps you out, right? Rather than just being one solid kind of boring color, you have this header that just kind of draws you in. So, um, so here's just some more kind of random stuff here. And one thing you can do is, you know, I mentioned before, when you have images, you can overlay different colors. So this is just a black, uh, text or, shape here so it's a square shape that i turned to black and then all i did was change the transparency now again if you have text overlaying you want to make sure the text is legible and that there is contrast so by doing uh th or to test that out you can simply come to text and just add in a text box make sure it's going to be you know the right color so let's say i wanted the text to be white because the background is dark and just make sure it's legible before you actually go and export this uh, background and put it in your funnel page. Uh, you can see again, just kind of random shapes here. Um, all right, so you can do a lot. These are just shapes that I got from Canva. So they're just in the, uh, the gradient section here. So basically all I would do is just, you know, I'll create one for you from scratch in a sec, but again, once you build up your kind of portfolio of different backgrounds, it's much easier just to pull them in when you start creating uh, a new project. All right. So let me quickly create one from scratch. So let's say we just have a white template and you know, I just want to pull in a couple of different shapes. You know, I can easily change the, the colors. I can rotate them. You know, so let's say you're, you have a section here. Let's say, you know, uh, you're building a section 
right? Let's say you're looking at this section. This is one individual section and you wanted to add something behind this graphic. So I would just come into Canva. Um, so even though I have this labeled as headers, it's not strictly for headers, right? It could be used for, for pretty much anything. So you come in and then you can rotate, right? Maybe I want to kind of fade this in the back a little bit more. And uh, if you have the images, what you can do is you can upload, let's say you know it's in your funnel, you can upload it and let's say they put it in Canva and that way you know right off the bat, you know, if it's gonna look right in terms of the contrast, maybe I need to, um, maybe I need to lighten it up a little bit more, right? Or if I have big text block or text box, I can just put the text here and then I can get a really good idea of how it's going to look on the actual uh, page itself before I go in and uh, put it into the page. So that covers kind of abstract shapes. Again, there's really no right or wrong, but kind of look around, see what other people do. I know this is pretty common where people will have like, um, you know, just kind of a random shape coming in from the side. They'll have some some text, let's say right here, you know, maybe they have their, their headline, um, let's say a, a sub headline, let's just add in some stuff and maybe they have a button. So, you know, Canva doesn't really have a button. So we'll just put in, you know, just something to kind of simulate and get an idea of what, what things would look like. All right. So maybe this button's going to be, you know, blue. So now you can kind of see, all right, well, this is starting to take shape, right? It's starting to look like an actual funnel section. So if you think this looks great, then again, you're going to have to delete out or maybe make a copy, delete out the elements you don't want to export because those elements should be put into, you know, uh, your funnel or your web page. So if that's click funnels, then do it within click funnels. Don't put the text here and export it. So that covers abstract shape. So again, you can do it with images. The biggest key, like I mentioned before, is contrast, making sure that your content is really what stands out and what's being consumed. This is just to help highlight and break up sections. And uh, again, really kind of build up some, some desire or complement whatever it is that you're trying to say. So once you're ready to export a background, you just come up to download, you select, make sure you select the actual background that you want, whichever page number it is. Otherwise it's going to export the entire thing as a zip file. And you can see I have over 80 pages. So, um, you know, you only want to export the, that single image. So just select the one you want, hit done, and then save it to your computer. Make sure that you compress the image, especially if you have an actual photo, because it's going to be a huge file size. So if you put that into your funnel page, that's just going to increase the load time, which, you know, that's the opposite of what we want, right? We want our funnel pages to load quickly. So we want to minimize the file sizes of everything we can, uh, including our backgrounds and our actual images in, uh, in the funnel. So let's just show you an example of um, actually implementing a background. So let's go into the playbook landing page here. Um, and so I have a bunch of backgrounds already saved. So I'm just going to pull one in and just quickly show you the process of uh, how it's done. So, you know, let's say, for example, this didn't have a background right now. So I would just go into that specific section that I want to uh, change, I would go into settings, click on background image. I would click upload and then pull in the background that, um, that you just created within Canva. So right now my images aren't loading up. So let me come out of this and try again here. Oh, it's just taking a second. All right. So you can see everything kind of just loaded up. So once you click upload, you can pull in your, your image. Um, 
into your library here. And once it's in your library, you can use them over and over if you want, right? If it matches the, the style that you're looking for. So let's say, for example, I, just, I wanted to pull this one in. So I would hit add image. And the one thing I would make sure I did was I typically fill it 100% width. And the reason I do that is because when I'm creating my backgrounds within Canva, I'm assuming that I'm going to be able to see the entire width on my page. So if you don't, sometimes it will cut it off here. Um, so I'm assuming I want to see the entire thing. So therefore, I, I shrink it to make sure it's 100% width. Now, this wouldn't be the background I choose for this because, you know, obviously this makes the, the text difficult to read. This was more for a header um, with white text, but I just wanted to show you quickly the process of bringing in a background. Now, sometimes your section goes long and it actually goes, let's say, past your background. So if that's the case, you have a couple options. You can either do a parallax effect, so the background is fixed and everything inside moves relative to it, or you can fill 100% width and height. And what that is going to do is it's going to stretch your image to match whatever the size of the section turns out to be. So if you have, you know, a lot more text or you have some images, you just have to make sure, or excuse me, you just have to make sure that it looks, um, it still looks right. All right. So if it's stretched out and it looks okay, then you might be fine. But if it's stretched out and it, it distorts things in a, in a weird way, or, or it starts messing, maybe overlapping with text or images where it shouldn't, then what I would do is go back and refine the, uh, the image. So I would come back into Canva and I would redo the background and then re-export it and bring it in until it, I can make it look um, how I want it to. All right, so hopefully that video helped um, in helping you come up with different ideas for funnel sections, um, for your backgrounds. Again, that's for your headers and for the sections throughout your pages. If you found value out of this, make sure to hit that subscribe button, leave a comment below, let me know what kind of other videos you want to see. And of course, make sure to check out Funnel Designer Secrets, where I give you a framework for helping you build seven figure funnels uh, modeled after some of the best funnels out there and even old traditional sales letters that have produced seven figures and beyond. All right, so make sure you grab that. That is definitely um, a... Uh, a useful template and tool, uh, especially if you're you're building within ClickFunnels, and you'll also get the Seven Design Mistakes uh, ebook. All right, so thanks again for watching. I will see you in another video. Take care.